Maria, um, MP, nurse, women's health minister, you've talked about the menopause in Parliament. What kind of response have you had from MPs? Well, you know, we're used to debating issues in Parliament, but I think the debate around the menopause was an overwhelming response um, from all sides of the House. And it's one of those times when you look at Parliament and it's a, a great example of there's no politics involved. All sides mm. uh, are united on this. And female and male MPs. So M male MPs spoke really passionately about the, uh, the effects that they're seeing for their constituents, but for also family and friends as well. Uh, and one of the key things we've realised is that, um, you know, People across the board, whether it's women themselves or GPs or health professionals, you know, really don't uh, have a great understanding of the menopause. Yeah, why is that? Because, I mean, you're saying that, you know, there's all these people there that they all feel, you know, connected to this in some way, whether they're male or female. And yet it has, it's only very, very recently that they've sort of sat up and paid attention to something that affects 50% of yeah. the nation. Well, we're, we're doing a, a, the first ever women, women's health strategy for England at the moment, and we had over 100,000 responses to that. And overwhelmingly, whether it's the menopause, but earlier on in life, whether it's fertility issues, dealing with endometriosis, mm -hmm. when you're older, you know, dealing with osteoporosis, women generally don't feel listened to because mm. they're told it's a natural part of ageing, you know, uh, giving birth is a natural process, so, you know, why are you complaining yeah. if you're in pain or you're, you're concerned? So for too often, women have, their health problems have been dismissed it's just something that women go through. Mm. And actually, um, there are ways, such as Louise explains around HRT, but also, you know, understanding that the menopause isn't just about your period stopping and hot flushes. You know, brain fog, not sleeping at night, joint aches and pains. Yeah. You know, there, there have been light bulb moments for women during our debates in Parliament thinking... But the thing me. is, we, I mean, all of these things we're now discussing openly, but the problem what seemed to be happening on the phone calls that we were getting was that these women were going to their GPs and they weren't getting the help, they weren't getting the advice, they were needed, they were being diagnosed as having something else. So it's like the dots aren't being connected here. And it sort of, it can't be something that happens, you know, next year, the year after. Women are suffering with this right now. Yes, yeah, so we've set up the Maternity Task Force and, and Louise is a, a member of that where we're, all four nations of the United Kingdom have come together to try and tackle this uh, and to really try and get some quick wins for women. Yeah. You know, only 10% of women are being offered HRT at the moment when we know that for many women that can make a, a massive difference to, the, to their symptoms. But it's not just about health, it's about the workplace, it's about, you know, young women in school. They're not learning about what happens during the menopause so they have to reach that point to discover it for themselves. Mm. So it's really about joining all the dots together and, and making changes happen now. You can, yep. you can see, uh, obviously, as you say, cross-party agreement, people working together, men working together, women working together, everybody understanding, looking at members of their families and their constituents, all of that really noble and great. Um, the, the task force met for the first time, I think, three weeks ago. Uh, so it's extraordinary that this has been happening forever, but uh, three weeks ago, OK, so that's a step forward. How long until there is something tangible and solid on the ground? Well, some of the work we're doing already is around um, getting access uh, to HRT and, and sending that message out um, that women should be offered HRT when they're coming forward uh, with the sorts of symptoms that, that we've described, but also around the cost of, of HRT. So um, it's already in NICE guidelines that if women have been on HRT for three months and are stable and it's clinically safe to do so, that they can get uh, 12 months worth of HRT and try and reduce that kind of uh, repeat prescription mm -hmm. issue. But we are also working on some... Um, real practical steps to help GPs and pharmacists to be able to dispense that really easily. So we are hoping that there'll be real progress on that fairly soon. What for you, what's the most important thing they could do? If they could have work on one thing right now to change, what would it be? I think the most important thing is about shared decision making and it's about women being allowed a choice and women yeah. to be listened to. And yeah. actually, it's not about the percentage of women on HRT, it's about 100% of women who want their hormones back should be able to have them yeah. because we know there are more benefits than risks. Do you think you'll look back on this task force and this moment and that first meeting three weeks ago and think that's when it started to change? That's when we started to I understand... I think things have been changing gradually, but it's isn't it amazing that the government are listening? You know, yeah. people at power are listening and so... I really feel like if, if we can't get it right, then we're never going to get it right. So this is an amazing opportunity, you know, to have Maria and Carolyn behind this. And Carolyn said at the meeting, didn't she, this has to be a meeting where we don't just talk, we want change. Well, that sounds good. And that's good. what we need. So, yeah, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your time. We'll see you in a bit.